Hi, I'm Bill Mould and here I am at my shop surrounded by all of the wheel building equipment. Over the years I've built uh, thousands of wheels and studied the, uh, the science and physics and engineering of them in some depth. I recently ran into an interesting situation. The guy brought in a 32 hole hub and wanted me to lace it up to a 16 hole rim which seems easy enough. You think well I'll, I'll just use every other hole. Uh, it's not quite as easy as that and I figured out how to do it one way anyway and I'm going to share that with you. Let's say we start with a rim that has 16 holes as indicated by those little hash marks. Let's say it's a front wheel and I lace it up radially it would look something like this. Here's a representation of the hub. The circles indicate the flanges. The smaller circle is the drive side flange. It's closer to you. And the larger circle is the non-drive side flange. And here those hash marks indicate the location of the holes in the flanges. And of course we see here the typical stagger pattern between the location of the holes in the two flanges. In blue we see my drive side spokes and in red my non-drive side spokes. So that was pretty easy. We're representing this as if it's a front wheel and we've done it uh, radially. If it had been a rear wheel I could have put in a crossing pattern just as well. Here is our same 16 hole rim but now a 32 hole hub with 16 holes on each side. I uneventfully lace eight spokes onto the drive side, also radially. But when I lace up my non-drive side spokes, I have a choice of doing it this way or this way. And if I take out my drive side spokes so I can see the non-drive side a little more clearly, then I have this. Or this and in both cases we do not have symmetry that we want on the non-drive side and the spokes in one case will try to pull the rim clockwise and in the other case counterclockwise. Therefore on my non-drive side I have unbalanced torque forces and that's not acceptable. And the problem arises because on the non-drive side I don't have holes that are in between the holes on the drive side specifically I don't have holes here but I can achieve symmetry on the non-drive side and avoid those unwanted torque forces if I lace the spokes up in pairs like this one pair here 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 and here which leaves me with unused holes in the non-drive side flange here, 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 and here. Now the wheel I was building was a rear wheel so I laced up the drive side easily enough as you can see here with uh, crossing spokes it's a one cross and on the non-drive side pairs of spokes like this. These two these two, these two, and these two. Which left me these unused eight holes on the 16 hole non-drive side flange. Here is a picture of the finished wheel showing the drive side and the non-drive side, but you can't see those very well so we'll zoom in. And here is a close-up of the drive side and you can see that every other hole is being used with either a pushing or a pulling spoke. But on the non-drive side we have two holes, two consecutive holes being used, then two consecutive empty holes, two consecutive holes being used, and so on. Once again a tangential pattern also on the non-drive side. So there you have it. If you want to learn a little bit more about the physics and engineering of bicycle wheels, take a look at my website and I'll provide you all the contact information you need. 
Here is my contact information. Thanks for watching.